I was at the helm of the Upsilon, Earth's deep space observatory, the pride of our interstellar fleet. The control room was a symphony of blinking lights and soft hums, each screen and dial in perfect synchronization. My hands rested on the console, fingers dancing over the controls with practiced ease. Space, a vast expanse of darkness peppered with the twinkling of distant stars, stretched out before us. It was a view that never failed to captivate me. Suddenly the tranquility shattered. Without warning, the screens wavered violently. The steady sound of machinery turned into a chaotic dissonance of alarms. Red lights flashed urgently, painting the room in a sinister hue. Outside the viewport, the cosmos itself seemed to revolt. The stars began to warp and twist, contorting into unnatural, grotesque patterns. It was as though the fabric of space-time was being torn apart, the natural order of the universe thrown into disarray. The ship responded in kind. A violent shudder coursed through the Upsilon, as if it were a small boat caught in a cosmic storm. Panels vibrated, loose items clattered to the floor, and the steady hum of the engines wavered uncertainly. I gripped the console tightly, my knuckles whitening. This was no ordinary space anomaly. This was something far more sinister. My eyes were fixed on the chaos unfolding outside, trying to make sense of the impossible. What the hell is happening? I muttered under my breath. I glanced at the navigation readings, but they were erratic, spitting out data that violated all known laws of physics. Time and space seemed to be at war with each other, and we were caught in the middle. In that moment, I knew that the universe had just changed forever. The familiar constellations now twisted like nightmarish mirages. We were sailing into uncharted waters, into a reality where the rules as we knew them no longer applied. The control room of the Upsilon was in turmoil. Jenkins, my second-in-command, was a portrait of sheer panic, his face illuminated by the glow of the multitude of screens that surrounded him. His fingers flew across the control panels with a frantic urgency, toggling between diagnostics, sensor readings, and external cameras, trying to make sense of the chaos. Captain, we've got multiple time anomalies detected, he yelled, his voice strained with the weight of disbelief and fear. The screens displayed a jumble of data, numbers, and graphs that fluctuated wildly. It was a storm of information, each piece more confounding than the last. Jenkins turned a screen towards me his hand shaking. On it, a graphic displayed the Upsilon and the surrounding space, but the image was distorted, fragmented like a broken mirror. It's like... Time itself is tearing apart, he exclaimed. I moved closer, my eyes scanning the data. Time distortions, spatial anomalies, fluctuations in the very essence of reality. It was as if the universe's fundamental laws were unravelling. As I observed, the external view shifted. The stars, which moments ago had contorted into bizarre, unnatural formations, began to revert to their familiar patterns. The constellations realigned, the cosmic dance returning to its regular rhythm. But this return to normalcy did not bring comfort. Instead, it intensified the sense of dread. A haunting feeling that what we had just witnessed was only the beginning. I turned away from the console, feeling the weight of command heavy on my shoulders. The crew looked to me, their faces etched with fear and confusion, seeking guidance in the face of the unknown. In that moment, I knew what needed to be done. Set course for Earth. Now. I ordered, my voice firm, leaving no room for doubt or hesitation. The crew sprang into action, a well-oiled machine trained for crises, though none like this. The Upsilon responded, its engines humming as the course was plotted and engaged. I stood at the helm, watching as stars streaked past the viewport, each a silent witness to our urgent journey home. As Earth's coordinates were set, a myriad of questions plagued my mind. What were these anomalies? Why now? And most importantly, were we the only ones affected? 
the need for answers pressed down on me like a physical force. I glanced back at Jenkins, who was now methodically collecting all the data from the anomaly for analysis. His earlier panic had been replaced by a resolute commitment, a demonstration of the professionalism that had always defined my crew. The Upsilon descended towards Earth, cutting through the atmosphere like a knife through cloth. The return journey, usually a routine and smooth process, was anything but. The ship shuddered violently, rattling every bolt and panel. I clutched the armrests of my chair, my knuckles white, as I watched the altitude numbers drop steadily. Brace for a rough landing, I called out to the crew, my voice steady despite the turbulence. The landing gear deployed with a groan of strained hydraulics and the ship jolted as it made contact with the ground. It was a far cry from the smooth touchdowns we were trained for, but we were down and in one piece. The base seemed off. From the cockpit I could see the familiar structures and hangars, but there was a disquieting stillness to the place. It was as if the base was holding its breath, waiting for something unknown. As Jenkins and I geared up to exit the Upsilon, I caught a glimpse of movement outside. People were there, but they weren't moving right. Some were walking in stuttered jerky motions, like puppets with tangled strings. Others appeared to quiver in and out of existence, there one moment and gone the next, only to reappear a few feet away. It was as if they were being fast-forwarded and rewound in time, trapped in a loop of temporal instability. Stay sharp, I warned Jenkins, my hand instinctively going to the blaster at my side. Whatever was happening here, it was clear that the time anomalies we'd experienced in space were affecting Earth as well. We stepped out of the Upsilon, our boots hitting the tarmac with a dull thud. The sky, usually a clear blue, was now a murky shade, as if the atmosphere itself was reacting to the disturbances. I scanned the area, taking in the surreal scene. The base personnel seemed unaware of their odd behaviour, continuing their tasks with a glazed look in their eyes. It was unsettling, watching fellow humans act so unnaturally. Captain, look at this, Jenkins said, pointing to a group of engineers near a hangar. They were working on a spacecraft, but their movements were erratic, tools slipping from their hands, only to reappear as if by magic. I approached one of them, a young engineer I recognised. Lieutenant Harris, I called out. He turned to me, his movements halting and disjointed. His eyes met mine filled with confusion and fear. Captain, I... I can't control... His voice trailed off as he glitched like a faulty hologram and then stabilised again. It was clear now that we were dealing with a phenomenon beyond our understanding. The time rifts had not just followed us from space. They were here, woven into the fabric of our reality. I turned to Jenkins, tenacity in my eyes. We need to get to the command center, now. We needed answers, and fast. Jenkins and I made our way through the base, each step taking us deeper into a landscape that had become foreign and unsettling. The command center seemed like a distant sanctuary in a world turned upside down. As we moved, our surroundings were a blur of temporal chaos. The ground beneath our feet felt unstable, as if reality was fluctuating, unsure of its own existence. Suddenly, a figure darted across our path, cutting through the stillness like a bolt of lightning. It was a human form, but its movements were unnatural, disjointed, as if it was being fast-forwarded and rewound at the same time. The figure moved with a jerky, spasmodic gait its limbs flailing in an erratic dance. It stopped abruptly, mere feet away from us. For a brief moment, time seemed to stabilise around it. The figure's eyes met mine, and in them I saw a haunting mix of confusion and fear. It was like looking into the eyes of someone trapped in a nightmare, aware of their own terror but powerless to escape it. The person's face, contorted by the temporal distortions, shifted between expressions of fear and confusion. Then, as abruptly as it had appeared, the figure vanished. One moment it was there, a living, breathing human being, and the next it was gone, 
as if erased from existence. The space where it had stood was empty, a void that seemed to vibrate with the remnants of its presence. What was that? Jenkins gasped, his voice imbued with disbelief. He looked at me, searching for an explanation, his face a mirror of the shock and fear I felt. A victim of the time rifts, I said, my voice steady despite the racing of my mind. This was no mere anomaly. It was a clear sign that the fabric of time was unravelling around us. The person we had just seen was caught in the throes of these distortions, trapped in a cycle of appearing and disappearing, existing and not existing. It was a sobering moment. The time rifts were affecting real people, twisting their existence into something unrecognisable. I took a deep breath, trying to steady my thoughts. We need to keep moving, I said, refocusing on our mission. The command centre will have more information. We need to understand what's happening and how to stop it. Jenkins nodded, his usual composure returning. We resumed our journey, but the encounter had left its mark. The base had become unpredictable, a place where reality itself was broken. Jenkins and I entered the command centre, a room that once buzzed with activity and now was subdued, its usual vibrancy dimmed by the crisis at hand. The large screens that lined the walls displayed a myriad of data, but all of it seemed secondary to the tension that filled the air. At the centre of the room stood Director Foster, a figure I had always known to be robust and commanding, but now he appeared worn, the lines on his face deepened by stress and sleepless nights. His eyes, usually sharp and observant, held a fatigue that spoke of the weight he was carrying. The staff in the room stood in a semicircle around him, their expressions showing concern. As Jenkins and I approached, they parted, giving us a clear view of the director. Captain, Director Foster greeted, his voice carrying a solemnity that immediately drew our attention. The situation is grave. I nodded bracing myself for the briefing. We've seen the effects firsthand, Director. What's the cause? Foster took a deep breath, and as he exhaled, it was as if he was releasing a burden he had been carrying alone. The time rifts are not natural phenomena, he began, his tone grave. Our analysis, combined with reports from our deep space sensors, indicate that they are being caused by an alien presence, the room fell silent. Alien presence. The words echoed in my mind. This was no longer a matter of mere scientific anomaly. It was a clear and present danger to the entire planet. Their technology, Foster continued, manipulates time. We've seen its effects. He gestured to the screens which now displayed images of the warped stars, the disjointed movements of base personnel and the erratic behaviour of wildlife caught in the time distortions. I studied the images, each one a demonstration of the power and reach of this alien technology. The scenes depicted were almost surreal. Trees ageing and rejuvenating in seconds, birds frozen mid-flight, then suddenly darting away at impossible speeds, and the base personnel caught in loops of their own actions. Director Foster stepped closer to the screens, pointing at a particularly disturbing image. It showed a section of the city where the buildings appeared to be fluctuating in and out of existence. This is what we're dealing with, he said, his voice laced with urgency. Time itself is being manipulated, torn apart and stitched back together, but not always correctly. The staff around us exchanged worried glances, the reality of the situation settling in, I could see the fear in their eyes, the dawning understanding that we were facing an unprecedented threat. Foster turned back to us, his gaze locking with mine. We have been monitoring these disturbances since they began. The pattern of these rifts, their intensity and frequency, all point to an intelligent force behind them. This is no random event, it's targeted, controlled. The notion of an intelligent alien force capable of manipulating time, sent a chill down my spine. The potential for destruction was unimaginable. Foster continued, We need to find the source of these rifts 
understand how this technology works, and most importantly, find a way to stop it. He paused, letting his words sink in. You've seen the effects out there, Captain. It's only a matter of time before these distortions cause irreversible damage. Our mission is clear, Foster continued, his voice resonant and commanding. Locate the source of these rifts and stop it. His words were concise, but the weight behind them was immense. I stood, my posture straight, feeling the responsibility settle on my shoulders. I nodded in agreement, my mind already running through the logistics, the strategies, the potential dangers we would face. We'll need every resource available. I stated, my voice firm. This wasn't a mission that could be accomplished with half measures. We were venturing into the unknown, against a force that had the power to manipulate the fabric of time. Foster met my gaze, his eyes reflecting the burden of command. You have full command, Captain. Stop this, before it's too late. His endorsement was an acknowledgement of the significance of the situation. I turned to the staff, aware that every eye in the room was on me. We're dealing with a threat unlike any we've ever encountered, I addressed them. We're going to need precise data, cutting-edge technology, and a team that's prepared to face the unknown. I need your best, nothing less. The staff responded with a flurry of activity, their earlier apprehension giving way to focused determination. Technicians huddled over consoles, pulling up satellite imagery and temporal readings. Scientists discussed theories and potential countermeasures, their conversations a rapid exchange of ideas and possibilities. I turned to Director Foster. We'll need to assemble a team, experts in alien technology, combat specialists and scientists who can help us understand and counteract the time distortions. Foster nodded in agreement. I'll give you access to our best personnel. This mission requires expertise from every field. We'll also ensure you have the latest equipment. Whatever you need, you'll have it. I felt a surge of confidence, bolstered by the support and resources being offered. This mission was a monumental task, but with the right team and equipment, we stood a chance. Time is not on our side, I added, my gaze returning to the screens displaying the chaotic effects of the time rifts. We need to move fast. The longer these rifts are active, the more damage they'll cause. We need to find the source and shut it down. Plans were set into motion. Teams were assembled, data compiled, and equipment readied. Every action was precise, every decision critical. The command center had transformed from a place of uncertainty to a hub of coordinated effort against a common enemy. I watched as my hand-picked team filed in, each member among the best in their respective fields. Riley, a woman with sharp eyes and an even sharper intellect, was a renowned expert in alien technology. Her reputation for decoding the most complex extraterrestrial tech preceded her. Next to enter was Martinez, a combat specialist with a formidable presence. His broad shoulders and steady gaze spoke of countless battles and unwavering courage. Following him was Dr. Singh, a physicist known for her groundbreaking work in quantum mechanics and temporal anomalies. Her keen analytical mind was crucial for understanding the science behind the time rifts. As they took their seats, I could feel their focus. These were professionals, each accustomed to high-stakes situations, yet I knew that what we were about to embark on was unlike anything we had faced before. We're facing an unknown enemy, I began, my voice resonating in the quiet room. Our mission is to locate and neutralize the source of these time rifts. This is uncharted territory. The rules as we know them don't apply here. Let's get to work, I said, signaling the end of the briefing. The team rose, ready to begin preparations. We had a mission to accomplish and time was not on our side. The city had transformed into a surreal landscape of distorted time zones. The atmosphere was still, punctuated by the occasional ripple of time that swept through the streets like an invisible tidal wave. As we stepped out into this chaos, the scene before us was like a painting come to life, a blend of past, present and future. 
Buildings that I had known as modern skyscrapers were fluctuating between states of new construction and aged decay. Glass and steel would corrode and rust before our eyes, only to renew themselves moments later, gleaming in the sunlight as if brand new. People too were caught in these temporal distortions. Pedestrians appeared and disappeared randomly, caught in loops of their daily routines. One moment, a man in a business suit would be walking his dog, and in the blink of an eye, both he and the dog would vanish, only to reappear several metres back, repeating the same action. It was a disorienting, haunting sight, a clear indication of the pervasiveness and danger of the time rifts. Keep moving, I urged my team, my voice steady despite the surreal environment. Focus on the mission. We needed to maintain our concentration, to not get lost in the chaos that surrounded us. Martinez, with his combat rifle at the ready, scanned the area with a soldier's precision. His eyes moved constantly, alert to any sign of danger or anomaly that might pose a threat. He was a reassuring presence, a solid point of stability in a world that had lost all sense of normalcy. Beside him, Riley was engrossed in her tech, a handheld device that she used to detect fluctuations in the temporal field. Her fingers moved swiftly over the screen, adjusting settings and analysing data as we moved. She was our guide, her expertise a crucial element in tracking the source of the rifts. Dr. Singh, notebook in hand, was taking meticulous notes, her eyes observing every detail of our surroundings. Each fluctuation, each anomaly was a piece of the puzzle, and her keen scientific mind was already piecing together theories and explanations. As we navigated through the distorted streets, our progress was slow and cautious. The city was a minefield of temporal irregularities, each step a potential plunge into an unknown time or place. We moved as a cohesive unit, each member playing their part, our senses heightened to the surreal dangers that surrounded us. The hunt had begun, a search for the source of a phenomenon that challenged our understanding of reality. As we moved deeper into the city, the distortions seemed to intensify. Buildings would oscillate between eras in the span of heartbeats, and the ground beneath us felt unstable, as if we were walking on the surface of a dream. Martinez signalled for us to stop, his hand raised in a silent command. He pointed towards an intersection where the air seemed to warp more intensely. There, he said, his voice low. That could be a hot spot. Riley moved forward, her device emitting a series of rapid beeps. The readings are off the charts, she confirmed. We're close to something significant. Dr. Singh peered around, her eyes wide with both scientific curiosity and caution. The patterns here are more complex, more structured. It's not random. It's like it's being controlled. I took a moment to survey our surroundings, realising that we were standing on the precipice of a major discovery. The air crackled with the power of the rifts. This is it, I said, my voice firm with resolve. We move forward carefully, watch for anomalies and stay in constant communication. The city's distorted landscape seemed to hold its breath as we advanced the bizarre and irregular pulses of time creating an unsettling symphony around us. Without warning, a chilling sensation crept up my spine, a primal alert to an unseen presence. It was then that the shadow loomed over us. We all halted, instinctively forming a defensive circle, our eyes scanning the environment for the source. Turning, we were confronted with an apparition. It was an alien entity, manifesting as a fluctuating shadow that twisted and writhed as if struggling against the constraints of our physical world. Its form was ephemeral, shifting between dimensions, fluctuating in and out of existence like a faulty hologram. The entity seemed to be made of the very stuff of the time rifts, a living embodiment of the chaos that had engulfed the city. Don't move, I whispered, barely audible over the humming energy that surrounded the creature. My team froze, their training kicking in, eyes fixed on the spectral figure before us. 
The entity seemed to study us. Its form was unstable. It was as though it was seeing us through the lens of different realities, analysing us from a plane of existence we couldn't comprehend. Then, as abruptly as it had appeared, the entity vanished. One moment it was there, a tangible threat, and the next, it was gone, leaving behind a void where it had been. The sudden absence of its presence was almost as jarring as its appearance. What was that? Riley asked, her voice trembling slightly with the aftershock of our encounter. She looked around, her device in hand, as if expecting the creature to reappear at any moment. Our enemy, I replied, my mind racing to process what we had just witnessed. This was no ordinary alien. It was something far beyond our understanding, a being that existed in the fractures of time itself. I could see the realization dawning in the eyes of my team. We were up against a being, or beings, capable of manipulating reality. It was a sobering thought, one that brought the enormity of our mission into sharp focus. We need to be extremely cautious, I continued, my eyes scanning the area where the entity had appeared. This creature, whatever it is, it's unlike anything we've encountered. We can't predict its movements or intentions. The encounter had shaken us, but it also solidified our resolve. We were dealing with a force that was sentient. It had observed us, possibly assessing our capabilities and intentions. We are going to follow it, I instructed, my voice firm despite the uncertainty that lay ahead. Keep your eyes open and watch each other's backs, the team nodded. Martinez checked his weapon. Riley recalibrated her device to scan for similar energy signatures and Dr. Singh scribbled down notes, her scientific mind trying to make sense of the encounter. The encounter with the alien entity had left us with more questions than answers, but it also provided us with a crucial lead. Determined to track this being, we set out through the city's twisted streets, a landscape that had become alien in its own right. Tracking the alien was a difficult task. Our surroundings were a kaleidoscope of temporal distortions, a patchwork of different times coexisting in a chaotic dance. Buildings and vehicles would phase in and out of different eras, while the streets themselves seemed to twist and contort, reshaping the city into an ever-changing labyrinth. Riley's device, originally designed to detect anomalies in alien technology, had been hastily recalibrated to track the unique energy signature left by the entity. It was our only guide through the maze, a beacon in the midst of the temporal storm. As we moved, the device beeped intermittently, the signal growing stronger and then weaker, as if the creature we were pursuing was moving in and out of our dimension. It's like chasing a ghost, Riley muttered, her eyes never leaving the screen. The streets were abandoned, the citizens having fled or become trapped in the time distortions. The silence was oppressive, broken only by the sound of our footsteps and the occasional ripple of time that distorted the air around us. Dr. Singh observed the patterns of the distortions with keen interest. The fluctuations seem to be converging, she noted, pointing to a spot on her own device where multiple lines intersected. It's leading us somewhere. Somewhere important, I added, my gaze fixed on the horizon. The path we were following seemed to be taking us towards the heart of the city, where the distortions were most intense. It was as if the entity was drawing us towards the epicenter of the chaos. The landscape around us continued to warp and shift, a surreal panorama of time and space. We passed through areas that seemed untouched by the distortions, pockets of normality in a world gone mad, only to step into zones where time ran amok, the past and future colliding in a dizzying display. Martinez kept a vigilant watch, his weapon at the ready, while Riley continued to track the entity's signal. As we neared the city centre, the distortions grew more severe. Buildings blinked rapidly between states of construction and ruin, and the ground beneath us seemed unstable, as if it could give way at any moment. Yet, through this maelstrom, a path was emerging, a trail blazed by the alien entity. It was leading us deeper into the heart of the chaos, to a destination unknown. 
But one thing was clear. Whatever lay at the end of this chase, it was crucial to understanding the source of the time rifts and, hopefully, to stopping them. We pressed on, the city's distorted landscape unfolding around us, a challenge and a mystery that we were prepared to unravel. The chase was on, and we were the hunters, following our quarry into the unknown. Each step brought us closer to what we hoped would be the answer to the pandemonium that had engulfed the city. The energy signature was becoming more consistent, less erratic, as if the entity had settled into a particular location. We're close, Riley announced, her voice infused with excitement and apprehension. The signal is strongest, just ahead. The city centre loomed before us, a jumble of architecture from different eras clashing and melding in a bizarre tableau. It was here, amidst this confluence of times, that we expected to find our quarry. Dr. Singh glanced at her readings. The temporal fluctuations are aligning in a pattern she said. It's almost as if we're being funneled towards a specific point. I looked ahead, my hand resting on my weapon. The path we had taken, guided by the alien's trail, had been treacherous and unpredictable. But it was clear that this pursuit was no random chase. It was a calculated draw into the eye of the storm. Stay alert, I cautioned the team. We don't know what we'll find when we get there. Martinez nodded. We're ready for whatever comes, he said. After navigating through the distorted city, we finally emerged into an area that felt like the eye of a storm. It was a clearing, surrounded by buildings that wavered in and out of different time periods. In the centre of this clearing stood a device, unlike anything I had ever seen. It was large, nearly the size of a small vehicle. Its surface was a complex array of geometric patterns. That's the source. Riley said. She was staring at the device, her device still in hand but momentarily forgotten in the face of the object before us. The Time Manipulator. The term Time Manipulator hung in the air, a fitting name for the cause of the chaos that had engulfed the city. It was a term that conveyed both its function and the enormity of its power. I stepped forward cautiously, every instinct warning me of the danger this device posed. It was like approaching a slumbering beast, one that could awake at any moment and unleash its fury. The air around the device was thick with energy, the ground beneath it warped as if under a great weight. Martinez and Dr. Singh followed, their eyes fixed on the device. Martinez's hand rested on his weapon, ready to react at the slightest provocation. Dr. Singh, meanwhile, had her notebook open, furiously scribbling notes and observations her scientific mind trying to make sense of the technology before us. The device was clearly alien in origin, its technology far beyond anything humanity had developed. It was both fascinating and terrifying, an illustration of the capabilities of its creators and the threat they posed. We need to be extremely careful, I said, keeping my voice low. We don't know what this device is capable of, or how it's being controlled. Riley nodded her gaze still locked on the device. I can try to analyse its energy patterns, see if we can find a way to deactivate it. She approached the device, scanning the energy. Dr. Singh looked around the clearing, her expression one of deep thought. The distortions are strongest here, she observed. This device isn't just manipulating time, it's anchoring these distortions. It's the epicentre. The revelation was a critical piece of the puzzle. This device, this time manipulator, was not merely a tool of chaos. It was a focal point, a controller that anchored the very distortions tearing the city apart. Our mission was clear. We had to find a way to stop this device, to end the distortions and restore the natural flow of time. But standing there, in the shadow of such a powerful and alien technology, I knew that the task ahead would be anything but simple. Let's assess the situation carefully, I instructed, my eyes never leaving the machine. Riley, see if you can decipher any operational patterns or weaknesses. Dr. Singh, your insights on the distortions could help us understand how to counteract the device's effects. Riley nodded, 
her focus returning to her device as she began to analyze the energy emissions of the time manipulator. Her fingers moved deftly, adjusting settings and taking readings, her expression one of intense concentration. Dr. Singh, meanwhile, continued to observe the surroundings, her notes becoming more feverish as she pieced together the complex interaction between the device and the temporal distortions. Martinez maintained a vigilant watch, his eyes scanning the perimeter of the clearing. Whatever built this might still be around, he said, his voice steady. We need to be prepared for any form of confrontation. Riley was deeply engrossed in her analysis, attempting to decipher a way to disable the alien device. Dr. Singh continued to scribble down her observations, her mind racing to understand the interaction between the device and the fabric of time. Martinez, ever vigilant, kept his eyes on our surroundings, his weapon at the ready. Suddenly, without warning, the distorted air around us trembled violently, a clear sign of an impending threat. From this veil, figures began to emerge. They were aliens, similar to the entity we had encountered earlier, their forms fluctuating and unstable, as if they were struggling to maintain a consistent presence in our reality. Defend yourselves, I yelled, instinctively reaching for my weapon. The team sprang into action, each member ready to face the new threat. The aliens moved with a jerky, unnatural speed, their forms blurring in and out of existence. It was disorienting. Martinez fired his weapon, the shots slicing through the air, only to pass through the aliens as they glitched out of our dimension. Riley, caught off guard, quickly regrouped and began to use her device, not as a scanner, but as a shield, trying to create a barrier between her and the attackers. Dr. Singh ducked behind a piece of debris, her scientific curiosity replaced by a primal instinct for survival. The fight was chaotic. The air filled with the sound of gunfire, the whir of Riley's device and the unsettlingly distorted cries of the aliens. It was a battle against the fabric of time which seemed to warp and weave around us unpredictably. I took aim and fired, my shots carefully timed to coincide with the brief moments when the aliens materialized in our dimension. It was a game of cat and mouse, a dance with shadows, as we tried to anticipate their movements. Amidst the chaos, the time manipulator continued to pulse with energy, its rhythm unaltered by the conflict around it. It was as if the device was indifferent to our struggle, a silent observer to the chaos it had wrought. Martinez managed to land a hit, his shot connecting with one of the aliens as it phased into our reality. The creature let out a distorted howl as it dissipated into a cloud of particles, its form collapsing under the impact. Riley, with a daring move, used her device to disrupt the frequency at which another alien was oscillating causing it to solidify long enough for us to land a decisive blow. Dr. Singh, though unarmed, played her part by shouting out patterns she observed, predicting where the aliens might appear next based on the distortions they caused in the air. The battle raged on, a surreal confrontation in a world gone mad. Each moment was uncertain, each movement a gamble in the shifting reality around us. The aliens, despite their ethereal nature, were relentless. Their attacks coordinated and precise, as if they were guided by a singular malevolent will. In this chaotic dance of time and space, we were guardians, standing against a tide that threatened to engulf everything we knew. The air crackled with energy, the ground beneath us shuddering with each temporal ripple that emanated from the time manipulator. As one alien lunged towards me, its form glitching like a faulty projection, I sidestepped and fired. The timing was perfect. The creature materialized just as my shot connected, and it vanished in a burst of distorted light. Despite the intensity of the battle, I couldn't help but notice the strange beauty of it all. The way the aliens moved, their forms bending and weaving through time, was mesmerizing. It was a deadly dance, and we were unwilling participants. The battle raged on with unrelenting intensity. The air filled with the sound of blaster fire, the hum of the time manipulator, and distorted cries of the alien attackers. Amidst this chaos, a breakthrough came from Riley, her voice cutting through the din of battle. 
I've figured it out. I can reverse the polarity, she shouted, her words infused with triumph and urgency. Her fingers flew over the device's surface, manipulating its alien controls with a newfound understanding. The device responded to her touch, its pulsating rhythm altering, as if in protest to her intrusion. Martinez, ever vigilant and steadfast, continued his relentless assault on the aliens. His movements were a blend of precision and grace, evidence of his skill and experience. With each calculated shot, he took down another alien, their forms dissipating into the distorted air. His protective stance was unwavering, ensuring that Riley had the space and security she needed to work. Dr. Singh, though primarily a scientist, showed a surprising aptitude in the midst of the firefight. She provided critical cover fire, her shots creating a barrier against the encroaching aliens. Her presence was a stabilizing force, her actions demonstrating a calm under pressure that belied her academic background. I was in the thick of the action, fighting alongside Martinez and Dr. Singh. Each move I made was calculated to protect and support my team, to maintain our defensive perimeter around Riley. The weight of the situation was undeniable. Everything hinged on Riley's ability to manipulate the alien device. The aliens, sensing the shift in the device's energy, increased their assault with a newfound ferocity. They seemed drawn to the device, as if understanding that their mission was in jeopardy. Their attacks became more coordinated, more desperate. But we held our ground, united in our purpose. Martinez's blaster never ceased its song, a rhythmic counterpoint to the whir of the time manipulator. Dr. Singh's shots were precise, her focus unwavering even as the world around us seemed to unravel. And I fought with a determination fueled by the knowledge that our mission, our very survival, depended on the success of Riley's efforts. Riley worked feverishly, her hands a blur as she manipulated the alien controls. The device began to emit a different tone, a high-pitched whine that signalled the reversal of its polarity. The air around the device rippled, the distortions in time and space reacting to the change in its operation. The moment was critical. The reversal of the polarity was a turning point in our battle. If Riley succeeded, we could stop the time distortions, restore the natural order of time, and neutralize the alien threat. With a decisive movement, Riley twisted a component, and her voice cut through the pandemonium. Now! In that instant, time itself seemed to hold its breath. The chaotic movements of the aliens, the rhythmic blasts from our weapons, the very air around us, everything paused in a moment of surreal stillness. Then in a burst of brilliance, a blinding light erupted from the device. It was a solar flare in the heart of the city, a radiant explosion that pierced the chaos and enveloped everything in its vicinity. The light was pure and intense, a physical force that pushed against us as tangible as a strong wind. Time, which had been stretched and twisted by the device, snapped back into place with an almost audible crack. The effect was instantaneous and disorienting. The buildings settled into their proper time. The ground steadied, the air cleared, and the once warped reality around us righted itself. The aliens, caught in the full force of the blast, disintegrated. Their forms, already unstable, simply unraveled, fading away like mist under the morning sun. As they vanished, their distorted cries were silenced, leaving behind a void where they once stood. We instinctively shielded our eyes from the blinding light, turning away and raising our arms for protection. The light was overwhelming, consuming everything in its path, a cleansing fire that burned away the anomalies that had plagued the city. When the light finally faded, a profound silence fell over the clearing. The device, which had been the source of such unimaginable chaos, now lay silent and inert, its once menacing hum reduced to nothing. It was as if the machine had expended its energy, its purpose fulfilled or perhaps thwarted by Riley's daring manipulation. 
We lowered our arms, blinking away the afterimages burned into our vision. As our eyes adjusted, we took in the scene before us. The city lay peaceful, its skyline familiar and unchanged. The surreal distortions, the fractures in reality, were gone, replaced by the normalcy we had known. Riley, exhausted but triumphant, stepped back from the device, her breaths coming in heavy gasps. Martinez lowered his weapon, his vigilant eyes scanning the area, still wary of any residual threats. Dr. Singh, her notebook forgotten, looked around, her mind trying to process the rapid return to normalcy. I stood there, taking in the sight of my team, of the silent device, of the city restored. The sense of relief was noticeable, a weight lifted off our shoulders. We had faced the unknown, stood on the brink of annihilation and emerged victorious. We had stopped the chaos, put an end to the surreal nightmare that had gripped the city. But this feeling of triumph was abruptly cut short. Dr. Singh, who had been examining her readings in the aftermath, suddenly looked up, her expression showing disbelief and confusion. Captain, she said, her voice uncertain. The device, it didn't just stop the time rifts, it reversed them. Her words hung in the air, puzzling and ominous. I stared at her, trying to comprehend the full implication of what she was saying. Reversed them? I repeated, my mind racing to catch up. As the realisation began to dawn on me, the world around us started to change. It was subtle at first, a slight blurring of the edges of reality, like a film running in reverse. The inert device began to hum faintly, its lights flickering back to life. The buildings around us started to shift, their structures flowing backward in time. Panic and astonishment intermingled within me as the rewind accelerated. The cityscape began to revert, buildings deconstructing into earlier states, cars moving in reverse on the streets, and the sky rolling back to the hues of earlier hours. We watched, helpless, as time itself unraveled around us, dragging us back through the events we had just lived. The battles, the confrontations, the desperate struggle against the aliens. All of it rewound like a tape being spooled back into its cassette. Then, in a disorienting flash, we were back on the Upsilon, at the very moment before the first rift had appeared. The familiar surroundings of the ship's cockpit enveloped us, the stars outside the viewport serene and unaltered. But something was different this time. Our memories remained intact. We remembered everything. The discovery of the time rifts, the battles, the time manipulator and its ultimate reversal. I looked at my team, seeing the same realisation reflected in their eyes. We were back at the beginning but with the knowledge and experience of what was to come. We have to do it all over again, I said, my voice steady despite the surreal situation. And this time, we'll be ready, I added. The mission had reset, but we were not the same. We were armed with foresight, with the understanding of the events that were about to unfold. As the Upsilon sailed through space, approaching the moment where it all began, we prepared ourselves. We knew the challenges, the dangers, and the mysterious enemy we were about to face. This time, we had the advantage of knowing what lay ahead, and we were determined to use that knowledge to change the course of events.